Hey everyone, Joshua Nesser, Trails Off-Road, and we are on a Rite of Passage Trail, and that is the Rubicon Trail. This is the original overland trail that dates back to when off-roaders started overlanding. And this went back to World War II when the people came home with their Jeeps. They came out here in droves and drove this trail. They camped at Rubicon Springs and had an epic adventure. We are here with the Jeepers Jamboree, and we're gonna do and relive this historic event. So why don't you sit back, stay tuned, and enjoy this video. Excited to stay at Harris Ranch last night. We're gonna get moving. Kinda get some gas, meet up with everyone else. Get to the mountains. Let's get to Georgetown. The Rubicon Trail is a little different than every other trail out there. And that is, it's not close to anyone or anything. So the drive there is always intense. A lot of people say to earn the Rubicon Trail, you have to earn by driving it and driving home. For us, that's a 10 hour drive to the Rubicon Trail. Left turn, left turn. Have to stop something. So we finally made it to Georgetown. That was a great drive. Actually, it was very beautiful coming in. Uh, we're just checking in right now, getting everything checked in. We're going to head to Tahoe. Stay the night in Tahoe, then we're going to drive back down and start the trail. Looking forward to this event. Never done it. And I've only heard great things. I've heard the food's absolutely amazing too. So, well, let's get finished checking in, get up the trail, or get up the road, and enjoy our trip. Upon arriving at the Rubicon Trailhead, you are greeted by the infamous Rubicon Trail sign. And this is for every off-roader a moment to stop and take a photo. Don't pass this up. It's a great opportunity just to take that one photo so you can hang out on the wall when you get home. Just a little more proof that you completed this epic adventure. Well, we made it to the trailhead. It's time to air down and get ready for this trip. One of the cool things about this event is they provide food for you along the trail. You like a burrito? Sure. There you go. Right. And I'm gonna tell you right now, these burritos were awesome. They're one of the best burritos I've ever had. You can uh, zip tie these up, or you just gonna let them hang. Yeah, I gotta find a zip tie. Okay. Where's Kim? Well, after a little bit of prep. We're on the road. Grab our lunch really quick. Next stop, the gatekeeper. So even though I've done this trail multiple times, my drone's already rushing again, just like it's the first time doing this trail. Cam, on the other hand, is the first time she's driving this trail, and she's doing it alone. So after a decent amount of time, we're getting pretty close to the gatekeeper. I can see some tires spinning up there. People are struggling. You know, we expected some traffic, to be honest. I uh, wanted to get up here and begin the trail because you have to get, you know, 200 plus vehicles in here. And uh, obviously, you know, everyone's starting the first thing in the morning, so you're going to have to cycle people through. And the great thing about the gatekeepers, after this, it should be pretty smooth sailing because we got everyone sort of spaced out because of this obstacle. And there's a line for everyone through it. If you think you got a built buggy, there's a line. If you have a vehicle on 33s and you know there's a line uh, just take your time find your line let's watch everyone go through this you guys nervous oh yeah yes oh man it's first time on the trail no, second time but i was five the last time <laughs> it's my first time driving it nice. Kim and I made the gatekeeper look very, very easy. As you can see, the CJ just walked through it, and Kim and the JL, no problem at all. Made it look like almost like a dirt road. Now, that's not to say the same for everyone else. Stop, back up now. Forward hard passing it. Hard passing it. Keep the turn, now hard back towards this way. So what a lot of people actually find enjoyable about rock crawling is 
the picking the perfect line. And sometimes the line just doesn't work, your tire slides off a rock, and next thing you know, you have to work a little harder than everyone else, you can get through the most simple obstacles. Now, I'm not saying this is a simple obstacle, as it is very difficult, but after a few attempts, we finally got Mike through, and we're moving along. So I got through the first part of the gatekeeper. Kim on that drop, drop suspension with those Falcon 37s did amazing. The tires stuck, she didn't slip at all and was able to walk up the, the gatekeeper. So just a stone's throw past the gatekeeper, you get to the edge of the granite bowl. And to be honest, this is one of the coolest spots to stop and just take in the view. So as you're cresting the top, make sure you pay attention and just enjoy it. Absolutely beautiful. One thing to note really quick, when you drop into the granite bowl, there is a ledge in the very beginning. Those rocks at the bottom are usually not there, and it's going to be a hard drag. Hey. <laughs> Make sure you take time, take lots of photos. It's a great trip for that. So remember what I was talking about? Beauty of Granite Bowl? Check this out. <laughs> Look at that behind me. Isn't that just stunning? Okay. Well, after a quick stop to take a bunch of photos, we're moving again. Let's head across the Granite Bowl. There's a couple of more ledges in between the two spots, and then we're gonna head over the steps. The one nice thing about the Rubicon Trail is most of the hard obstacles are optional. So Kim, in this instance, is going to take the bypass while I and Randall went up the steps. Now, don't try to be a hero and break right on the beginning of the trail. So just take your time and take the bypass if you're comfortable with that. There's, there's no reason to go home broken. In the traditional Rubicon fashion, the Rubicon has found the weak points on the vehicle. In this case, Chris broke his front air locker already. And just to the right of him, we have a vehicle that is overheating. And that's what the Rubicon does. It is relentless and we'll find the weak points on every vehicle. Luckily for us, it was just a seal so Chris can continue just without a front locker. So once you get past the granite bowl, you get to an area that has a lot of rocks. Now there is a couple of hill climbs in those rock sections that are very steep. Get some blood pumping. Luckily, this wasn't a breakdown. It was just simple. I wanted to look at something because he dragged. We're still moving, heading towards Rubicon Springs. This trip, we decided to not stop at Ellis Creek but keep moving. But there is a bathroom at Ellis Creek. Now, on this trail, you're not allowed to use bathrooms in the forest, so you need to stop at one of the many outhouses and use them. We're moving towards Walker Hill, have a few obstacles in the way. Some water made things a little interesting as Things got slippery. We were able to make it through no problem. Some of the people in our group did struggle a bit, but let's have the fun.
Between Walker Hill and Soup Bowl is what they call the cell phone tree. This, if you look off to your right, you see this area. This is pretty much where the tree's at. You basically get AT&T service only. As you get past this point, the rock crawling is going to get harder and harder. In this case, the holes were filled by small rocks making this really easy, but this could be one of the most difficult spots on the trail. Since the day was getting long and we started late, we decided to skip past Supo and keep moving. Now, this is where the trail starts getting more downhill. You even have a lot more downhill obstacles and some of the most difficult rock crawling of the trail. It's probably a good idea to get out and pick your lines, as a wrong line here could likely lead to a problem. During the family trip of the Jeepers Jamboree, they blocked off Little Sluice. Uh, they did say we could do it, but Perfect it was getting late in the day and we were trying to keep moving. So we actually ended up doing the bypass, and this is almost my first time on the bypass, and I was pretty nervous going across this. And what you can see is you're on the edge of this mountain and look straight down at the side. This drop down right here Kim was doing was extremely steep. I mean, you're about 45 degree downhill, even 50 at some spot. It gets a little nerve wracking, but we made it down, no problems. So we continued down the trail, made it past the V-notch, Arnold's Rock. Arnold's Rock was actually the easiest I've ever seen it. Uh, we got to this one spot, and I said everyone go right to the easy line, but, you know, we're out here to wheel, we're out to do the difficult stuff, so everyone decided to take the harder lines. So uh, we'll watch Kim take the hard line off this large drop. Perfect. Now turn off a bit. All the way. Hard turn, okay? There you go, come on. Good job. Hard turn, go. Now straighten your wheels. Perfect. Coming down, you're touching rocks in a few seconds. Perfect, drive it out. Good job. Right as Kim has finished dropping a sledge, yeah, good in the background, wild, it? there's a problem. What's wrong? Uh-oh. So what happened? The gas cap started leaking profusely out of the back of my CJ. Uh, since we were going downhill from this point, we decided just to keep driving it. Uh, one thing I thought about afterwards is I do carry a neoprene. We should have paid attention to what tools you have and what you have available. We could have made a new seal and probably sealed it back up. But this was a good opportunity to stop and enjoy the view. So why going down the granite after Arnold's Rock is off camber. You're just tilting like 30 degrees sideways and it's super uncomfortable. Um, you just feel like you're going to roll and roll and roll and roll forever. Um, and on top of that, there's little ledges, little bumps. So you dump, drop down a bump, vehicle gets a little hop and then it settles in. Not the most comfortable feeling. And what you find a lot of people try to stay low, but that doesn't really help much at all. Um, sometimes some spots it can help. Uh, overall, it's not enough to roll, but it sure is heck enough to be very uncomfortable. The scenery here was still amazing. We stopped, took in the views while we waited for him to catch up. 
and we just came around this corner Randall, and we saw this. position yourself, you need to put a winch on him. Take right there, and we're going to pull cable all the way to him. Well, that completes part one of the two-part series for the Rubicon Trail. If you'd like to see part two right now, go to trailsoffroad.com, click on the Rubicon Trail, and right there in the description, you'll see link two for video two. Now, if the video is out, I'll go ahead and put it in the top corner right here, so you can actually just click on it and watch the next one. Thank you for watching. Hope to see you on trail soon. Yeah.